Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome to Virtual University. In today's lesson, we are going to read about steps in problem solving. And we will follow the usual pattern of reading, followed by comprehension exercises, scanning for information, vocabulary exercises, and content review exercise. And in the end, we will look at language functions. And this time, we are going to explore cause and effect relationship between text and uh, cause and effect relation. Right. Uh, today's text is about steps in problem solving. Can a computer solve problem? Definitely not. It is a machine that carries out the procedures which the programmer gives it. It is the programmer then who solves the problem. There are a few steps that one has to follow in problem solving. Step number one. The programmer must define the problem clearly. This means that he or she has to determine in a general way how to solve the problem. Some problems are easy, while others take months of study. The programmer should always start by asking, do I understand the problem? Step number two. The programmer must formulate an algorithm, which is a straightforward sequence of steps of instructions used to solve the problem. Constructing an algorithm is the most important part of problem solving and is usually time consuming. An algorithm can be described by a flow chart which may be stated in terms of a sequence of precise sentences or a block diagram. The latter is a diagrammatic representation of the sequence of events to be followed in solving the problem. The relationship between the events is shown by means of a connecting arrow. A block diagram can show if a process has to be repeated or if there are alternative routes to be taken. Step number three. The programmer must translate the algorithm or flowchart into a computer program. To do so, he or she writes detailed instructions for the computer using one of the many computer languages available following the exact sequence of the flowchart algorithm. The program is usually written on coding sheets, which have a specific format drawn on them. Step number four. The programmer must then key punch the program or give the coding sheets to the key punch the key punch operator to do it. The program is either punched on cards or entered into the computer at a terminal with a visual display unit. Step 5. The program must then be tested. To do so, the, the computer operator puts the, the deck of cards in the card, card reader and presses the read button. This transfers the information to the memory of the computer. Next, a printout shows if the program works or if it has errors called bugs. If the programmer is using a terminal instead of cards to enter the instructions, it is possible with the aid of a few commands to store the program in the memory of the computer 
and get a printout. In step 6, the last step is to add the data to the program and run the job completely. The computer will then perform the calculations necessary to solve the problem. It will follow the instructions in the program to the minutest detail. Therefore, one can say that the computer is a robot. It doesn't think, but simply does what it is told. Now, that was a very interesting uh, text. A lot of people think that computers are like, yes, they are modeled on the human brain, but they are robots. Now, we shall go through the first exercise, and that is the usual comprehension exercise. Three statements are given you, and you have to identify which of these statements best express or expresses the main idea of the text. And what were the reasons for your eliminating the other choices? Statement number one. Constructing, constructing an alg algorithm is the basic step in solving a problem. That was number one. Constructing an algorithm is the basic step in solving a problem. Number two. Solving problems becomes easier if certain steps are followed. Solving, solving problems becomes easier if certain steps are followed. In the third statement, the computer does what the programmer tells it to do. The computer does what the programmer tells it to do. Now, out of these three, which statement, one, two, three, which one best expresses the main idea of the text? I'm sure you had no problems. It was statement number two. Solving problems becomes easier if certain steps are followed. Now, what about number one? Number one only states one of the six steps that have to be followed in solving problems. It is again a detail, not the main idea. By now, you should have no difficulty in distinguishing details from the main idea of the passage. And statement number three, again, it is, it describes a characteristic a characteristic of the computer and it is not a step. The statement was that the computer does what the programmer tells it to do, fine, but that is a characteristic. It is not a step that must be followed in solving problems. So, in this exercise where you had to identify the main idea, it was statement number two which was the main idea. Now, the next exercise, understanding the passage. Again, a comprehension exercise and you have to decide which of the statements, which of the ten statements are true or false and you will do this by referring to the information given in the text. And you have to make the necessary changes to convert the false statement into a true one. Statement number one, the computer is a great help to people because it solves their problem. Apparently, it looks as if it is a true statement, but it isn't if you examine the language of that statement. It says the computer is a great help. to solve their problem. 
the computer only helps solve the problem. Right? Number two, so number one was a false state. Number two, all problems are equally difficult to solve. No, it's a false statement because not all pro problems are of the same difficulty. Right? And number three, an algorithm is a sequence of instructions used to solve a problem. And this is what the text says. It is a true statement. Statement number four, the most important part of problem solving is defining the problem clearly. No, it's a false statement. Why? Because the most important part of problem solving is constructing an algorithm, not defining the problem. Number five, block diagrams cannot show relationships. Block diagrams cannot show relationships. It's a false statement because block diagrams show relationships with arrows. Block diagrams show relationships with arrows. Number six, coding sheets are used for writing programs. Coding sheets are used for writing programs. This is a true statement. Coding sheets are used for writing programs. Number seven, punched cards are the only way of transferring the program to the computer memory. Punched cards are the only way of transferring the program to the computer memory. This is a false statement. The pro false because the program can be can be punched on cards or entered into the computer at a terminal with a VDU, a visual display unit. Right? And statement number eight, if the data is not a added to the program, the computer cannot perform calculation. True simply true. If the data is not added to the program, the computer cannot perform calculation. So, statement number eight was correct. Number nine, it is a good idea to test the program before adding the data. It is a good idea to test the program before adding the data. And this was a true statement. Number 10, a computer is very intelligent. It is capable of thinking. A computer is very intelligent. It is capable of thinking. That shouldn't have taken you long in deciding. It's a false statement because machines are not capable of thinking. Programmers are. So there is a difference between programmers and machines. Machines are not capable of thinking. So, statement number 10 is false. Now, an exercise on locating information. If you go through the text, just find where this sentences that I will read out are located in the text. Where will you find this idea? Programs are usually written on certain lined form. I can give you a hint. This is in paragraph 4. Mind you, paragraph 4, not step 4, because in the text that you read, you've got steps marked for you. Number two, a block diagram can show a decision 
with two different outcomes. A block diagram can show a decision with two different outcomes. To look in paragraph 3, you will find that this idea is expressed over there. Number 3. The programmer is the one who solves the problem. You will find this information right in the beginning, in the very first paragraph. Number 4. Even if the programmer is using a terminal instead of card, it is possible to get a permanent copy of his program. Wherein in the text is this information expressed? You will find this in paragraph 6, right at the end. And the next statement not all problems are of the same level of difficulty. Not all problems are of the same level of difficulty. And this you will find in paragraph 2. Now we'll move on to an exercise in which you have to explain the meaning of certain word, not the meaning, sorry, the what do these words refer to. It's a contextual reference exercise. Number one, look for a word in paragraph one where it says it is a machine. And what does it in this phrase refer to? It is a machine. And it refers to the word computer in paragraph 1. This line occurs in paragraph 1, but you have to tell what does the word it refer to. It refers to, to the word computer. Number 2. Again, looking at the same paragraph, what does the word which in the phrase which the programmer gives it refer to? Which the programmer gives it? What is which? What is which referring to? And which is referring to procedure? the procedures which the programmer gives the machine. Still looking at paragraph 1, find this phrase, who solves the problem? What does the word who refer to? Who solves the problem? And who refers to the programmer? Naturally, because it is talking who is always used for a human being. So, the human being over there is the programmer. Number four, in paragraph three, move on to paragraph three and over there look for the phrase which may be stated. Which may be stated. And here, what does the word which refer to? Which over here refers to the flow chart. It refers to flow chart. Number five, still looking at paragraph three, look for this phrase. The latter is a diagrammatic representation. The latter is a diagrammatic representation. And what does latter refer to? The word latter refers to blocked diagram. Latter refers to the two words blocked diagram. And number six, now move on to paragraph five. 
find paragraph 5 quickly and look for the phrase operate to do it, operate to do it. And what does the word it refer to? It refers to key punch the program, key punch the program. Number 7, move on to paragraph 6 and look for this phrase. This transfers the information. This transfers the information. What does this refer to? What does this refer to? This refers to the reading cards through the card reader. Right? And number 8, again looking at, still looking at paragraph 6, look for the phrase or it has errors. Or it has errors. What does it refer to? It refers to the word program. And number 9, move on to paragraph 7. It will follow the instruction. Find this phrase, it will follow the instruction. What does it refer to? It over here refers to the computer. And the last one, keep looking in paragraph 7 and locate the phrase, does what it is told. Does what it is told. What does the word it refer to? It refers to the word computer. Again, the word computer. So, those were two comprehension exercises. Now, we move on to the vocabulary part. Again, look for synonyms and antonyms. First, we look at Synonym, words with similar meaning. If you look in paragraph 3, you will see that there is a word over there which is the same in meaning as the word construct. See if there is a word over there which you can use for the word construct. And the word is formulate. In this context, the word Formulate and construct have same meaning. In the same paragraph, that is paragraph 3, look for a word or two words that you can use for the phrase takes a lot of time. There are words given in that paragraph which mean the same, which mean takes a lot of time. And you have the phrase time consuming. Again, in paragraph 3, look for a word which you can use for exact, for the word exact. Is there a word over there which has the same meaning or you can substitute for the word exact? And you will find that you have the word precise. Precise and exact are synonym. One can be used for the other. Now move on to paragraph 6. Look over there for a word which is used there which means the same as mistakes. A word which is similar in meaning as mistakes. And you have the word bugs. Bugs. Again, looking at paragraph 6, find a word which you can substitute for the word help. Is there a word over there which is the same in meaning as the word help? And there is a word and the word is aid, A-I-D. When you aid someone, when you give aid to someone, you help them out. All right? Now, we look at a few words 
that are antonyms. Look in paragraph 2 and see if you can find a word which is the opposite in meaning to the word ambiguously. Ambiguously. The word has to end, uh, has to have the same ending as the word ambiguously. The opposite of ambiguous. Ambiguous is more than one. You are not very clear. So, the word would be, the opposite of ambiguously would be clearly and it is given you in paragraph 2. The next word, look in paragraph 2 and look for a word which is the opposite in meaning to the word specific, the antonym of specific. Specific means something that is, again, very precise, very clear and the opposite of specific would be general, applicable to more than one. All right, and move down to paragraph 7. Look, for, in paragraph 7, there is a word over there, which is the opposite to the word partially. Partially. Can you look, find a word which is the opposite of partially. Partially, as the word tells you, if you break it up, part. The opposite would be completely. And in paragraph 7, you will find the word completely. Completely is the antonym of the word, completely is the antonym of the word partially. Now, still looking at vocabulary, we will do an exercise on word form. Again, different forms of words are given you and you have to complete the sentences by choosing the most appropriate form of the word. And later on, you can check the differences in meaning in your dictionary. And the first group of words are procedure, proceed, proceeding. Look at the endings of these words and you will get the clue. Proceed, proceeding, procedure. The first sentence, the machine carries out the dash which the programmer gives it. Now, what does the machine carry out? It carries out the procedure which the programmer gives it. And in the next one, you've got two words left and you have to choose one. The correct one would be, you should with care when using a calculator, you should Proceed with care when using a calculator. The next group of words are program, programmer, programmed, programming. You should be familiar with these words by now. Shouldn't be any problem for you. Look at the first one. I would like to dash in COBOL. I would like to program. The right word, the appropriate word is program over there. In the next one, there were quite a few errors in my, and again, it will be the same word. You will use the same word as in the last sentence. There were quite a few errors in my program. See, my calculator is, it plays a tune on the hour. My calculator is programmed. You've got clue over there. The verb is. So, it has to be the other verb, 
the helping verb, uh, the verb, the word that goes with the helping verb is programmed. Is programmed. It has to be the word with the ed ending. It plays a tune on the hour. And number D, Fortran is one of the many dash languages available in the market. Is one of the many programming languages available on the market. Number E, computer is a new field of study at the university. Computer programming is a new field of study at the university. And the last sentence, he is a good dash because he always constructs algorithm for his problem. Right? A good and the correct word would be programmer. Again, words that end with ER are nouns. You've already got the word good over there, which is an adjective which describes the noun programmer. Right? So the right word over there was he is a good programmer. Now the next group of words are relationships relate and related. Now you can look at the endings again and after you've looked at the endings and look at the sentence, it shouldn't be difficult. A. The first two steps in your program are not, they are basically different. And here you will look at the word different. And the right word would be, they are not related, meaning that there is no connection between them. B, in a flow chart, the dash between events is shown by means of connecting arrows. So, you've got a clue, the word the, and the, you know, is always it always goes with a noun. So it has to be the relationships between events is shown by means of connecting arrows. The correct word is relationships. Now the next two words are code and coding. Do you have any sheet left? Do you have any coding sheet left? B. I have to dash my program. I have to code my program. C. Assembler is one example of a machine code. Right? And the next group of words are print, printer, printing, printed. A. Your name and address in block letters. Very common. You find this whenever you are filling out forms this sentence, print your word, name and address in block letters. B was introduced by Gutenberg in Germany and it was printing. Printing was introduced by Gutenberg in Germany. Number C, the quality of the dash output from a daisy wheel printer is superior to that from a dot matrix and the word is printed. And number D, dash printers, oh, I'm sorry, I've already told you, uh, provided a hard copy of the result of data processing operation. And the word is printers. Right. Now, we look at a review of the contents. We'll have a review of the contents of the passage that you read. Now, Try to think of a definition for each of these items. There are items, there are words given in word bank. Now, complete the statements with the appropriate words. Make sure you use the correct form. 
the singular or plural. You have a number of sentences, five sentences, and you fill uh, those blanks in those sentences with the right word from this word bank. Number one, special forms which are usually used for writing programs are called, which one is it? Are called coding sheet. Another word for program errors is, and the word is bugs. Number three, a number of steps used in solving a program is called an algorithm, right? Not algorithms, but an algorithm. Number four, a machine which is incapable of thinking but follows instructions is called a robot. Number five, dash is either a group of exact sentences to solve a problem or a block diagram. And we know it's a flow chart, right? Now, uh, again, a, di um, a flow chart, it's a kind of a flow chart is given you. You have to fill in the missing information, right? You complete the following, the diagram, which is shown you, and fill it out with the sequence of steps. Now, solving a problem is a process which involves various steps. The first one is done for you. Define the program. That's the first thing. What is the next step? Fill in the block, the empty block. What is the next step? Notice that you have to go along with the arrows, the direction in which the arrows go. Number one has already been done for you. Define the problem clearly. The next one you will write, formulate. The next step is formulate an algorithm flowchart, which is followed by translate the algorithm into a computer, pro into a computer program. And then key punch the program or key, key it in at a terminal. The fifth word, uh, the fifth uh, step is test the program, correct the bugs. And the sixth step is add the data and run the program. Right? Now, Having done the usual exercises, we will look at, we will look at how in English cause and effect or cause and result are shown. Now, you will find a number of sentences which have been taken from the text that you've just read, steps in problem solving. Now, while reading these sentences, you underline or you identify in whichever way suits you the cause. There is one word or words which show the cause and then underline that part of the sentence which shows the effect or the result of that cause. Now, you can circle the, uh, the effect, uh, circle the cause and underline the underline the cause once and circle the effect result mark. Now, in the first sentence, if the programmer is using a terminal instead of cards to enter his instructions, he can, uh, he with the aid of a few commands. Now, which is the cause? Which word shows, us, shows the cause? In that sentence, if the word if is the cause, 
the result, the uh, causal effect mark, the cause mark. If the programmer is using a terminal instead of cards, that you can underline once. And the effect is, he can store the program in the memory of the computer and get a printout. Number two, now over there, which word is the cause mark, which word shows you is related to cause and effect. The word is therefore and the computer will follow the instructions in the program to the minutes to the minutest detail. Right? And the third one is the third one is, one can say that the computer is a robot. All right. Now let's move on to another exercise, and that is how classification is shown in English. Now, in English, the term classification means to separate objects from one another. The simplest classification divides things into those that show groups of characteristics that are shared and those that are not. Uh, for example, uh, one would not place birds and uh, fish together in the same class, right? Birds belong to one class, fish belong to another. And you wouldn't put fish and birds with trees. Classification usually goes from general to specific, and it is essential in attempting to make sense out of things around us. We uh, classify most of the time. Now, in English, there are ways of showing, uh, of doing this. Classification is a process of bringing order out of confusion by breaking things down to the general topic into closely related parts in a logical way. Now, uh, one way of doing this is by going from general to specific. Now, there are several ways of expressing each of these relationships. You can focus on the large or high level category and talk about its part. That is, you can move from the general to the specific. And the following expressions are used, and you can use these. For instance, the word is made up of, is composed of, comprises, consists of, can be divided into, is, is of, has, includes. These are all words to show, to define classification. A general to specific classification will usually have a single, a singular main verb, unless there are two or more things being analyzed simultaneously. Now, for example, listen to this. The CPU is divided into three parts. The control unit, the arithmetic logical unit, ALU, and the memory. You can say the same thing in different ways. The first one is, is divided into three parts. The second way is, the CPU has three parts. The control unit, the arithmetic logical unit and memory. You can say the same thing again in another way and that is, the CPU includes three parts. The control, again the same thing. Number four, the fourth way of saying the same thing, and that is the CPU is made up of, is made up of three parts. Notice you used the phrase is divided into, then you used the phrase has three parts, and then you used includes, and the fourth is 
is made up of. These are all terms used to classify, used to show classification of things. And we are using the example of the CPU. The CPU is composed of three parts, the control unit, the arithmetic, logical unit and memory. Notice uh, in the sentences that I read to you, that you heard, they are all dealing with the CPU, but I, I have stated them in so many different ways, consists of three parts. These are all ways of showing classification. Now, that was from general to specific. Now, we'll look at ways of showing, of, of going from specific to general. A specific to general classification is what the smaller or the lower level components make up when they are put together. And the usual expressions are constitute, maybe, can be, are of makeup form. And look at a few examples. Now, a specific to general classification, remember, will have plural verbs because two or more uh, lower level categories are the focus of a classification. Now, example. Again, we are using examples from computers. The control unit, the arithmetic logical unit, and memory are three parts of the CPU. It's the same thing, but now we are moving from specific to general. Right? The control unit, the arithmetic logical unit, the ALU and memory are three parts of the CPU. You can say the same thing. The control unit, unit uh, logical unit, APU and memory are the three parts that make up the CP. Then you can say the same thing again in another way, and that is the CPU, the, A, the ALU, the, C, the control unit and memory are the three parts that form the CP. Right. And with that, we come to the end of this lesson. See you again next time. Allah Hafiz.